There are many types of martial arts, and people have always wondered which one is the most perfect. Fighters from different directions tried to sort things out in order to understand who's stronger. These tournaments were held, but did not have a large audience and were unofficial. One of these tournaments took place on November 12, 1993 in Denver, Colorado, USA, and was called the Ultimate Fighting Championship. At that time, neither the organizers, nor the fighters, nor the audience had any idea that this would be a turning point in the world of martial arts. Let's remember the birth of the most powerful mixed martial arts organization in the world and analyze the fights of the first UFC tournament. Vail Tudo tournaments are considered to be the forerunners of the UFC tournaments. This competition with a limited set of rules took place in Brazil in the 60s, mainly between representatives of jiu-jitsu and freestyle wrestling. Now, Vail Tudo is considered by many to be a separate universal style of martial arts. The very term Vail Tudo was popularized by members of the great Gracie clan, who invited any fighter to fight them, and then even made this a show on Brazilian television. In the early 90s, one of the members of the Hawaiian Gracie clan emigrated to the United States to open a Brazilian jiu-jitsu school and promote this style in the United States. At this time, entrepreneur Art Davey dreamed of organizing a tournament where representatives of different martial arts clashed, but he needed a person with a name who could make it a reality. Art knew about the Gracie family and approached Orion with the idea. Gracie supported and saw in this, first of all, the popularization of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in the United States and the involvement of young people in his school. They hired producer John Mills, who had an amazing gift for persuasion, to join their team, and in a fairly short period of time, they found 28 sponsors. The idea of the tournament was to bring together eight representatives of different styles and to reveal one winner per evening. The organizers came up with a ring in the form of an octagon, set a minimum number of rules, and set a prize fund of $50,000. Among the selected eight fighters were kickboxers Patrick Smith and Kevin Rogier, Savat representative Gerard Gordo, shootboxer Ken Shamrock, karateka Zane Frazier, sumo wrestler Taylor Tuli, boxer Art Jimerson, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu representative Hoist Gracie, Orion's younger brother, personally chosen by him as representative of the Gracie family. 2,800 people were in the stands of the McNichols Arena, and another 86,000 subscribers ordered a view on a pay channel. And everyone was waiting for how this spectacular tournament would end, in which there are no rules, weight categories, points, and time limits for a duel. The tournament was opened by a confrontation between two radically different styles of martial arts, Sumu and Savat. The 410-pound Hawaiian, Theo Tuli, had a successful sumo wrestling career behind him and decided to compete for $50,000. The representative of the Savat was the Dutch karateka Gerard Gordeaux, who was the world and European champion in Savat and weighed half as much as his opponent. After a short reconnaissance, Tuli rushed to the attack. Gordeau threw a few blows to the head on the way out, but not exactly. Then, near the net, the sumo wrestler stumbled and fell to his knees. Gerard took advantage of the moment and delivered a lightning-fast soccer kick to the opponent's head, and then immediately a power uppercut to the eye. The fight was stopped, and Gerard Gordeau advanced to the semifinals. With this kick, he knocked out several of the Hawaiian's teeth and discouraged any desire to participate in such tournaments again. Subsequently, the fight was named one of the five best fights between David and Goliath in the history of MMA. The second duel was between kickboxing representative Kevin Rogier and karate representative Zane Frazier. Both fighters were from the USA. Rogier was the champion of North America, the world heavyweight champion according to the World Kickboxing Association and he got all his victories ahead of schedule. Karate Zane Frazier was a black belt, U.S. and North American heavyweight karate champion. It was reported that the organizers saw him in a street fight and decided to invite him to participate in the tournament. After the gong, Rogier went forward and with several hooks to the head, knocked the karateka onto the canvas of the octagon. 
From side control, the kickboxer delivered a few more blows to the back of the head. Frazier was able to get up and missed a knee to the stomach. The fighters grappled in the clinch, and Zane first hit his knee in the groin, and then grabbed his opponent by the hair, delivered a series of knees, and hit with a good uppercut. Later, Rogier missed a tight overhand, and he answered with short hooks from the clinch. Frazier dominated the clinch and didn't hesitate to punch his opponent in the groin. Rogier tried to pull the Karateka down, but got a tight knee. Then suddenly, a turning point occurs, and the kickboxer puts pressure, clamps the opponent at the neck, and delivers several powerful blows to the back of the head. Frazier falls and catches another hard kick to the head with a down kick. Zane Frazier's corner throws in the towel. In the fifth minute, Kevin Rogier won by technical knockout and advanced to the semifinals of the tournament. The third fight of the evening was a fight between jiu-jitsu and boxing. Hoist Gracie was a member of the great Gracie clan and a decorated Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. His opponent was American professional boxer Art Jimerson, IBC America's light heavyweight champion, who was on a 15-fight win streak. For a whole minute, none of the fighters dared to attack. Gracie then delivers a swift takedown and sits down in a full mount position. Without hesitation, Hoist twisted Art's left arm around his own neck, and the American tapped and surrendered. Gracie made it to the semifinals, and Jimerson returned to professional boxing, but his career went downhill. Out of 17 fights, he won only four. In the last fight of the quarterfinal, the representative of shoot fighting, American Ken Shamrock, and the local Taekwondo player, Patrick Smith, clashed. Shamrock had a successful wrestling career, and this was his fourth MMA fight, where he was undefeated. His opponent, Patrick Smith, was a Taekwondo black belt, who is currently the number one ranked kickboxer in the US and number five heavyweight in the world. In the first seconds of the fight, Shamrock made a takedown with a throw and climbed into full guard to Smith. Patrick did a net grab, preventing his opponent from doing anything. Ken quickly pulled out of the hold and did a foot grab. Patrick tried to fight back with his free leg and elbows. The wrestler was looking for a comfortable position for some time and held a painful heel hook. Shamrock won via submission and advanced to the semifinals, and Patrick Smith, the following year, sensationally knocked out rising K-1 star Andy Hub in just 19 seconds, gaining a large following. In the first bout of the semifinals, the Dutch savant representative Gerard Gordeau and kickboxer Kevin Rogier fought the Dutchman, as it turned out later, had broken knuckles in his fist after that uppercut to the sumo wrestler. And Rogier was badly exhausted from the first fight with Zane Frazier. After the gong, the American began to put pressure, and Gordeau hit several low kicks on the way out and hit with a hard right cross. Rogier sat down on his knee and tried to get up, but Gerard didn't let him landed a lot of finishing blows to the head from top to bottom and added a kick to the body. At 59 seconds, the fight was stopped and Gerard Gordeau advanced to the final of the tournament. Kevin Rogier spent six more fights in mixed martial arts and won only one. Among them, there were two fights with Dan Severn, but in both, Kevin lost. In the second semi-final match, respectively, Ken Shamrock and Hoist Gracie met. The fight didn't even last a minute. Immediately at the beginning of the round, Hoist tried to go to the legs, but Shamrock skillfully defended himself from the pass, turned his opponent over, but didn't hold the position. Gracie still dragged the American into the guard, and Shamrock tried to get on the painful leg. As with Patrick Smith, Ken gave his back, and the tilted jitzer took advantage of the situation and performed a chokehold. Shamrock gave up and was eliminated from the tournament while Hoist Gracie advanced to the final. These fighters have met more than once in the cage of the octagon. The rematch came two years later at UFC 5, 
which ended in a draw. Then the rules were changed, according to which time limits appeared and after 36 minutes, the fight ended in a draw. In 2003, in honor of the 10th anniversary of the championship's creation, Ken Shamrock and Hoist Gracie were inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. The third time they met was already in 2016 at the Bellator 149 tournament. And then, Gracie won by technical knockout in the first round. This fight was the last in the career of both fighters. And in the final, the winners of the semifinals, Gerard Gordeau and Hoist Gracie clashed. Confrontation between Savat and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. In the first seconds of the fight, Gracie made a pass to the legs, but failed to carry out a takedown. The Brazilian, from the clinch, tried to hook, and in the end, he succeeded. Gracie got into a full mount and landed several headbutts on the Dutchman's head. Gerard bit Hoist's ear, but he managed to pull it out of the Dutchman's jaw. Almost immediately, Gordeau rolled over, and it was a mistake. He gave his back, and Hoist strangled him in the second minute of the fight. Gordeau, after the fight, spilled a lot of negativity towards Gracie. In his opinion, he should have met with Hoist at the beginning of the tournament, where he would definitely have won, with the organizers. To deliberately bred them for different fights, Hoist Gracie became the first UFC champion. He also won the second and fourth UFC tournaments. With his victories, he popularized Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and since then, MMA fighters, in preparation for the fight, began to pay more attention to the study of grappling on the ground. Hoist is considered one of the most influential figures in the history of MMA, and his name is the first in the UFC Hall of Fame list. The first tournament gathered a huge stir. It was not even broadcast on TV. It wasn't even broadcast TV that brought him great fame, but it's further distribution on video cassettes, fights without rules. That's exactly what the inscription read on it during distribution. Initially, the organizers didn't plan to repeat tournaments. However, due to the success of UFC 1, they decided to organize new competitions. Since then, the UFC organization has come a long and thorny path. From fighting without rules, where there were government bans, times on the verge of bankruptcy and fierce competition, the UFC has become the most powerful mixed martial arts promotion in the world. MMA has now become a separate sport and is very popular these days. Now, of course, a lot of rules and restrictions have been added. The level of organization of fights and fees has increased, but it all started right then on November 12, 1993, at the first, the Ultimate Fighting Championship Tournament. If you enjoyed this video clip, please put the like, leave your comments, and press the bell to avoid missing the next video. And if you watch this video without a subscription, sign up for the channel right now. See you in the new video.